Thank you, Carolyn, and thanks for your leadership, Carolyn, on this issue in terms of providing some very important data on the consequences of the existing system. You know, I've uh, made the case that the system is fundamentally flawed, it's broken, and it's time to go back to square one and put together a system that really works for the kids of the state of Texas. You know, I, um, I, I remember coming back into government, I've been out of government since leaving the Reagan administration when the governor asked me to come in and chair the Texas Workforce Commission in 2008. And when I got back from Vietnam and out of the military, I, uh, I'd been appointed in 1970 to the National Advisory Council on Vocational Education and served in that capacity for five years. And, and back then, there was a general recognition that really they're, they're valuable paths, but different paths in terms of education. Back then, we called it vocational education. Now you call it career and technical education. There was an opportunity at that time, really local control of our schools and an opportunity for those students so interested, inclined to move in the direction of career and technical education or vocational education and others uh, to move in the direction of being college ready and moving on to a four-year university. And I came back and, and I saw it in Austin, I, I saw it in Washington, there's sort of this mindset, uh, you know, the, the attitude that everyone needs to go to a four-year university, what I've called the one-size-fits-all approach to education. And to me, it isn't a matter of race, it's, it, it's all the kids. I don't care whether they're Anglos, Hispanics, or African Americans, they're losing with the kind of system we have today because it, it really is a, it's a trap. It's not working for those kids who are college-oriented because of the successive emphasis on teaching to the test. Test learning has replaced real learning in so many respects. And secondly, it really has a negative impact on an, uh, analytical and critical learning skills, which are so important uh, to success in life, success in college, and success later in life. And secondly, you're losing a lot of kids at the high school level who wind up being dropouts or throwaways because they're deemed you know, failures because they failed to pass a test in the ninth grade and wind up dropping out. And if they'd been given the opportunity for career and technical education, I believe everybody should have the basics, but given an opportunity for career and technical education, our own data at the Texas Workforce uh, Commission confirms it, that those students who get career and technical education uh, in high school do better academically. It's like the light bulb goes on. All of a sudden, they see the relevance of education, they understand the importance of basic math, of basic literacy skills, if they're going to move on and do what they enjoy doing. Uh, people have different talents, we need to recognize that, and I think it's time to go back and design a system in which, uh, really, it's just common sense, and it's multiple pathways. You can have a college-oriented uh, curriculum, and again, everybody gets the basics, all of the students at the, through a grade school and the early part of high school, but you have the opportunity of multiple pathways. A student who's interested in going on with an emphasis on math and science can move in that direction and take four math and four science courses. But not every student should be required to take that restrictive curriculum at the secondary school level. A student that might be interested in the humanities and fine arts can go on and get a, uh, a, a uh, emphasis on humanities and the fine arts, and again, a college-oriented uh, curriculum. Uh, a student who might be career-oriented uh, can get, if you will, the basics and then move into a specialized skilled trade. Do you realize the average age of a welder is 55? The average age of a master, master plumber is 56? The average age of someone who's a stone masonry craftsman is 69 years of age? We've almost, if you will, not just uh, uh, neglected the pipeline of vocational and technical education by this obsessiveness that everybody's going to go to a four-year university, but we've almost denigrated the value of working with one's hands. Uh, different kids have different talents. I've got seven kids, and they're all different. Some are oriented towards moving in a direction of a four-year university. Others learn differently. We've got to encourage young people to use their God-given talents and not write them off prematurely. It's like uh, my daughter who's a teacher and one of her friends says, you know, Mr. Pawkin, you know, we know some of the kids are gonna pass the test so they get ignored. We know some of the kids are going to fail the test so they get ignored or shunted aside somewhere else. And we focus all our attention because of this pressure uh, coming out of Austin and coming down to the administrators and then down to us, we focus all our attention on the kids who are on the bubble. 
It isn't working for the college-ready kids or to make college kids college-ready, and it isn't made, uh, working for those who are career-oriented. So I think we've got to go back to real learning. I'm one who believes in local control of education and accountability. Now, those of us, I find it funny that some people, and I, I'm a law, I was in the Reagan administration, and I believe in the idea that the people know best at the local level how to handle their problems. There has to be accountability, but there are a lot better ways of doing it. I think back to the time I was in Vietnam. I was an oxymoron, an Army intelligence officer in Vietnam. And I'm on the Cambodian border. And this is early 69, and we're still feeling the effects of McNamara and his civilian whiz kids policy. They were going to quantify warfare. There were a lot of people who were sitting in Washington, D.C. with high IQs, but who were brilliantly wrong. And, and, you know, and then people who were career people had to game the system. And so there were all kinds of crazy things happening because you took the human factor out of the reality of what was going on, and everything was going to be measured by quantitative data. data. And you lost the strategic sense of how to put together a strategy that might have worked. And I, I think about that as I look at this crazy high-stakes high testing system, and I think it's absurd to be paying $450 million over a five-year uh, period of time, money that otherwise could be used uh, to help uh, educate young people in Texas uh, for a testing system and so much time that is taken away from courses. It's taken away from career and technical education courses, as I talked to vocational uh, teachers around the state, and it's taken away from the academic uh, teachers. There was a, a professor or teacher of chemistry, and all of a sudden his students didn't do well in the preliminary star test, and now he is pointed out he's going to have to spend most of his year uh, not with the kids learning chemistry or being in the labs, but studying for the star test. Now this business has to stop. You know, it was, uh, it was uh, um, Will Rogers who said, if stupidity got us into this mess, why can't it get us out? Uh, but you know what? I'm encouraged by the fact that there is a consensus, conservatives and liberals, business and labor leaders, educators, parents, teachers, uh, administrators. I mean, doesn't that tell you something when people closest to the situation are unhappy with uh, what's going on and when people who not necessarily are on the same side are working together? And I think it's very important as we go forward, form a coalition, but keep it on this issue. It's very easy to break up a coalition. It's a pretty eclectic one that, that is coming together. And it's very hard if people start getting into other issues. And I think it's very important. We have a great opportunity to make some major changes this next legislative session. session. But we've got to put our individual issues aside that may relate to it to a degree, but are not related to the overall objective of giving, getting back to a common sense approach to education in the state of Texas for the benefit of our kids. Thank you.